What's going on guys and welcome to another episode of the Cracker Pack series. I hope you guys are doing fantastic and having a great start to your week. Uh, hopefully you all had a fantastic weekend uh, and hopefully you're looking forward to some more Cracker Packs this week. Today we are opening up a pack of Chronicles, uh, a very interesting reprint only set. Uh, caused a lot of waves in Magic at the time of its release, which I don't remember the year offhand, but uh, the whole idea was it was to get the cards that, you know, were fairly expensive or creeping up in price at that time uh, down to a level where anybody could play them. And they did print them at white border, so it was not the original black border cards, but it still gave you the ability to, to play those cards that you really wanted to play with, uh, but weren't necessarily able to get your hands on. And so that the issue that came out of that obviously was the collectors and uh, I put myself somewhat in that category uh, of someone who doesn't like to lose value on cards however uh, unfortunately that's just the way the game goes and I, I am an advocate for getting the cards into everybody's hands I think that's more important uh, it's a game at heart and so hopefully uh, sets like this well not necessarily in this exact way but will still continue to exist we'll continue getting some some nice reprints so Regardless, we're going to go through every card here. I believe our rare is actually right at the front. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but we will go through every card and at least try uh, to figure out what our first round draft pick will be. Uh, didn't open this set at the time, so we'll we'll see what the what cards we get. But Hell's Caretaker is our first one here. Uh, it is a 1-1 one, one for three and a black. Starting off pretty bad, but tap it, sacrifice a creature to take target creature from your graveyard. Put it directly into play as though it were just summoned and then use this ability only during your upkeep so you can't use this multiple times uh, during a turn or in uh, you can't really surprise anybody I guess is the better uh, point there but uh, interesting card um, it does allow you to do some really nice shenanigans and I think uh, it's really nice because you can sacrifice itself. Uh, to the ability so if you don't have any other creatures this could be something that you could just use for its that one time effect uh, but regardless you can actually repeat this if you keep it around so I think there's a lot of potential with a card like this I don't know if it's necessarily first pickable uh, we'll see what the rest of the pack holds I do think there's a lot of interesting stuff you could do with it though Uh, Shield Wall is an instant for one and a white all creatures you control get plus zero plus two until the end of the turn uh, this is a very not great combat trick. So uh, what's nice about it is it does affect all of your creatures at once. For only two mana at instant speed, that's great. Uh, it's going to mean a lot of your creatures survive a combat turn where you play something like this. And that's great. It's nice to be able to do that. However, uh, it doesn't boost their power. It doesn't do anything like that. And so unfortunately, you're not actually getting too far with it. Uh, this is a very defensive combat trick. Generally speaking, those tend to be much, much less uh, significant in a game than the power level combat tricks. So the ones that are really gonna boost you over the top. And so I don't like a card like this in general. I don't think I would really ever play it uh, unless there, there might be a very rare exception, but in general, I'm not super stoked about cards like this. Uh, Rabid Wombat, uh, love that art. <laughs> uh, it's a zero one for two and two green and it gets plus two plus two for each creature enchantment on it. Uh, attacking does not cause it to tap. So. Uh, cards like this can go over the top very, very quickly, and I think that's important to note, uh, that there is very, very high upside to a card like this. Uh, the downside to a card like this is it's not good on its own. Uh, you have to, first of all, take your turn four, ideally, uh, to play this, and then hopefully if it sticks around long enough, which is not super likely because it is a zero one, uh, it, it's, it, you still have to stack more cards on top of it to make it good. So that means it's probably two turns worth of investment before it really gets to go off. Uh, now that's not always bad. Sometimes against particular decks, you have those two turns. However, against aggressive decks or something like that, you're not going to have that ability. In which case this tends to be very, very bad. Uh, not only that, but you're powering on enchantment creatures and ideally you're getting it really far over the top to be able to do that. That's all well and good. However, if you stack two, three, maybe even four enchant creatures on this one card and they have a removal spell of any kind uh, that can deal with it, you lose so many cards off of only one. So uh, that's really, really bad in terms of a card advantage standpoint where you're losing a lot of stuff for only one thing on the opponent's side. You never want to be in that position, in my opinion. Uh, it happens so often, I see, especially with new like corset drafts and stuff. Uh, I saw it with 2020 a good bit, 
people would, uh, and sometimes it would work, I do want to mention that, but a lot of times people would take a card, pile on these enchant creatures, get really, really far ahead very, very early, lose that creature, and then just not have any follow-up plays because all their deck was was a couple of creatures with a bunch of enchant creatures. Uh, and so I, I don't like that strategy. I think that tends to be very, very bad. Uh, and this, while can uh, be a very powerhouse card, I don't think is really the card that I would take for sure. I know that was a bit of a long explanation, but I just want to point out there's a lot of upside and a lot of downside to a card like this. Uh, Wall of Heat is a 2-6 vanilla creature for two and a red. Not my favorite card in the world, but it is going to stick around for a while. It's a very uh, stally kind of card. Um, and honestly, that six toughness is really good for three. Uh, however, it's not going to actually prolong or, uh, excuse me, forward your game plan too often. Uh, it's most of the time just going to sit on the field just as a blocker. I don't think it's a very exciting card. I definitely would take the caretaker over it. Uh, Boomerang is an instant for two blue return target permanent to its owner's hand. Now, this is a very, very solid tempo play. Uh, I actually really like Boomerang. Uh, not only does it hit creatures, it's any permanent, which is really important. Uh, that just means you could bounce an enchantment or you could bounce uh, technically a land. You could kind of do anything with this. Uh, and that flexibility is really crucial, uh, especially in limited, where you really need to be able to deal with whatever your opponent might be uh, throwing at you. Uh, and so I actually really like this. I uh, don't know if it's better than the Caretaker. I think the Caretaker has potential to go really, really far over the top. Uh, this is probably just a more solid, flexible card. Uh, so I'm going to keep them together for now. We'll, we'll see what we come up with. Uh, Metamorphosis is a sorcery for one green. Uh, sacrifice a creature to add an amount of mana equal to its mana cost uh, plus one to your mana pool. This mana may be used uh, of any one color, excuse me, and then use that mana to cast only summon spells. So you could only cast creatures off of it. Uh, it's sort of like a birthing pot effect on a sorcery. Uh, and I don't love that solely because you're dependent on one, having the right creature on the field, two, having this card in your hand, and three, having a third uh, card in your hand, creature specifically, that is going to be able to be played off of this card. So that's a three cards that you're really depending on, and I, I just don't think that's very good. It ramps you a little bit, sure, but such a particular situation to make this good, and I don't think that makes it worth it. Uh, Giant Slug, interesting art, uh, is a 1-1 one, one for 1 and a black, and you can pay 5, and then during your next upkeep, choose a basic landwalk ability, and then Giant Slug gets that landwalk ability until the end of the turn. That's a lot of investment for a 1-1 with land walk of any kind. That seems really bad to me. Creatures in these olden days of magic tended to be a lot worse than they are now, so it's not surprising, but holy crap. Seven mana to get a 1-1 with land walk of your choice. That seems so bad. So definitely, definitely not a creature I am interested in. Uh, Tormod's Crypt is an artifact for zero. Uh, you can tap it and sacrifice it to remove all cards and target player's graveyard from the game. Uh, this actually deals with the Caretaker very well, but uh, generally in Limited, you wouldn't play this main deck. Uh, you would definitely play this sideboard. I mean, if you find yourself up against a Caretaker deck or any kind of Reanimator deck, it's going to be useful for sure. But a lot of games, the graveyard is kind of just you're done. You're done with the graveyard most of the time in Limited. Uh, that's not to say in Constructed, a card like this definitely gets played. However... Again, in limited, not so much the focus. And so I, as much as I love this card for constructed, I don't think it's worth it to take it in limited. If you end up with it, it's good to have, uh, but otherwise not super exciting. Uh, Transmutation is an instant for one and a black until the end of the turn. Switch target creatures, power and toughness. Effects that alter power and toughness instead and vice versa. So basically everything flips. Uh, I don't love this card. I think it's basically a combat trick. Uh, you can probably use this to pick off an opponent's creature, which is great, but you're dependent on what that creature is and what your own creature is, and I don't think that's very good. So, in my opinion, not super stoked about this. I guess it works kind of well with the walls, uh, but that's really the best bet. Uh, Repentant Blacksmith. Uh, is a 1-2 for 1 and a white, and it has protection from red. So a very straightforward card here, honestly. Uh, very much a sideboard card, I would argue. I don't think it's an amazing card just to run, though if you're short on playables, I suppose it's probably okay. Uh, but it's very, very good against a red deck, where if that's all they've got, 
you just now have basically an unstoppable one two <laughs> that's gonna hopefully go the distance and so uh in that instance it's very very good to bring in maybe from the sideboard but in general not super exciting uh definitely not the pick here uh fountain of youth is an artifact for zero as well uh, you can pay two and tap it, and you gain one life. Very straightforward card. I don't love this. It's a lot of investment for only one life. Uh, it does give you a bit of a mana sink, which is kind of nice, but I don't think it's a very good mana sink. Uh, one life per turn is not amazing. I will just go ahead and say it's probably not going to save you. Yes, it's going to build up. Every life counts, and I agree with that, but I don't think this is a first pickable card. I think this is something you take, and maybe you play if you just have nothing else to go in. Uh, but... It's not a super exciting card. Uh, Emerald Dragonfly is a 1-1 one, one for 1 and a green. It has flying. Uh, and you can pay 2 green and it gains first strike until the end of the turn. Uh, again, a lot of investment for a 1-1 one, one with first strike. That's 4 mana you have to invest. However, it is an evasive threat. And I do think that makes it a little more worth it than the, uh, the Landwalk uh, mana sink that we saw earlier. I think this is a little bit better. The art's really nice as well, but uh, it's still so so much uh, land that you have to pay for this. So not super into it. I do think it's between the Caretaker and the Boomerang. Uh, I'll, I will kind of cheat a little bit on this one and just say if you're really interested in going far over the top, I would take the Caretaker. Uh, I do think it gives you that option of going really, really far over, but it's very dependent on having the cards that you want in your graveyard to make that work. Uh, and so if you're into that kind of strategy, go with the caretaker. If you're not, and you really just want the most solid, most flexible card, I would 100% go with boomerang. Uh, boomerang is a very, very good tempo play. It hits any permanent and at instant speed for only two blue. That's amazing. So absolutely. I think my safe pick would be boomerang. Uh, if I'm going to be honest, I think that's what I would pick. However, I can fully understand taking the caretaker. I do think it's a very good card as well. Uh, it's a little bit of an investment, but I do think you can get some really awesome stuff out of it. So that's my assessment. Feel free, of course, to disagree in the comment section below, as always. But if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crackaback video.